to be Christ the person, Christ the church, which is Christ the mystery, or Christ the anointing, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, depending where you are in the Bible. What we're talking about is Christ as he was seen by the prophets in his coming in the New Testament. And when we talk about Christ existing before the foundation of the world, we're not talking about that body that existed before the foundation of the world, the body of Jesus. Because the body of Jesus had a beginning. And when did it begin? When did it begin? Y'all don't know when the body of Jesus began? When he was born. Can we say amen? <laughs> you know, because he was a human being. Are you all following me? Jesus, the Son of God. Now, the Trinitarians will tell you that Christ, the person, the Christ, the Son of God, existed for eternity alongside of the Father. That is not true. <clears throat> because if it was the case, then you would have two gods. Now, they also say, uh, well, uh, they voted the Holy Ghost as the third person of the Trinity. Can't remember exactly what year that was. It was uh, some years after the Nicene Council in 325 AD. I think it was before 400 AD that they, I want to say 376 AD, that seems to be ringing a bell. They voted the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit as the third person of the Trinity. So they had the Holy Father. They had the Son of God, and they had the Holy Spirit, all divine, all co-equal, all separate persons. And that's Trinitarianism. That's three gods. But um, when we talk about Christ existing in the Old Testament, Christ before the foundation of the world, we're not talking about the person Jesus Christ that walked the earth. We're not talking about Christ the church. We're talking about God as the eternal spirit that existed before time. The Father, the Son of God, had a beginning. So when we talk about Christ in the Old Testament, don't think of that body of Jesus that was born of Mary that walked the face of the earth. That body had a beginning. Can we say amen? You know. And he began, that's why he's called the only begotten son of God. The fact that he's called begotten means that he had a beginning. Christ the person had a beginning. But Christ the eternal spirit existed before the foundation of the world. All right. Now, let's look at it here. Let's go to St. John chapter number 8. And here we find Jesus in a conversation um, with the religious leaders. And of course, um, he um, tells them that they are of their father, the devil, in verse 44. In verse 23 and 24, he says, unless you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. They did not believe that he was the Messiah. They did not he believe that he was the God of the Old Testament. And so, um, let's pick it up in verse number 52. And we're going to deal with verse 52 all the way down to verse number 59. All right. We have it. Can we say amen? All right. Let's read. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Now, the death he's talking about was eternal damnation. That's the type of death he was talking about. He said, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from spiritual death to spiritual life. Once we got saved, we have obtained eternal life. We have eternal life right now. 
Eternal life is not based on conditions. You either have it or you don't. And we get it when we are born of the water and of the spirit. Now that we have it, we have got to do whatever it takes to keep it because you can lose it. John said, see that thou lose not those things which you have wrought, but that you receive a full reward. So everybody that comes into the church is born again, has eternal life. We are fighting to keep it and doing everything that we can to keep it. How do we keep it? By laying aside every weight in the sin that does so easily beset us, by living holy, walking with God, staying out of sin. And if one falls in sin, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh shall have mercy. Jude said, keep yourselves in the love of God. So we have everlasting life. Once we got saved, we have it. We have just got to do what it takes to keep it. And to do whatever it takes to keep it, that when the rapture takes place, we will be caught up to meet the Lord where? In the air. Can we say amen? All right. So um, in verse number 54, now he's going to answer the question. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. In other words, if I honor myself as a human being, um, my honor is nothing. Now, we're living in a day where a lot of men like honor. They like to be recognized. But what does that mean? Nothing. It's not going to get them into heaven. Is that right? It don't mean anything. really doesn't mean anything. Some folk get upset if you don't recognize them, if you don't honor them. This is what Jesus is saying. If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me. That's the type of honor we want. You may never get recognized by the world. May never be famous. I may never be a famous preacher like some of the other celebrity preachers. But that's nothing. As long as God honors me, as long as God honors you, that's the type of honor we should be striving for. All right, honor me of whom you say that he is your God. Now, why did he say this to them? Because they were dishonoring him. And he's saying, I'm not going to honor myself. The Father, he honors me. So I don't need any of your honor. The Father honors me. Let's read on. Yet ye have not known him. But I know him, and if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you, but I know him and keep his saying. Now, they claimed that they knew God, but they were fighting against him. Who was God? <laughs> but they didn't see him as God because they were blinded. And, of course, he told them, um, if you really knew God, you would know me. You would know who I am, that I am God manifest in the flesh or that I'm God wrapped in a man's body. As one preacher said Jesus was God with a man's suit on and the man's suit was the human body. But they didn't recognize that. Well, um, he said, but I know him and keep his saying, verse 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was what? So Abraham saw his day. Abraham saw the day of Christ. He saw Jesus. Now Abraham was 2,000 years before Jesus. But Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and he was glad. Well, let's look at the response, verse 57. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen who? Abraham. Now again, Abraham existed how long ago? Two thousand years ago. You see, there's two thousand years from Adam to Abraham. There's two thousand years from Abraham to Christ. 
So Jesus is saying, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw and was glad. You're not even 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? Well, let's read. Jesus saith unto him, them, verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And they knew exactly what he was saying because when Moses, who was the greatest prophet Israel ever had, came in contact with God at the burning bush and told him to go to Pharaoh, go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And he said, what is your name? He says, tell him I am sent you. What does I am mean? I am what I will ever, I am whatever I want to be at the time I want to be it. That was considered God's original name, transliterated today as Jehovah. All right? Before Abraham was, I am. So when he made that statement, called his name I am, called himself I am, he was in fact saying to them that he was the same God that talked to Moses out of the burning bush. Not only did Abraham rejoice to see his day, he saw and was glad, he was before Abraham. That he was Abraham's God. And this is what caused them to do this. Let's read the next verse. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple going through where? The midst of them. Can we say amen? Before Abraham was, I am. Now let's jump over to chapter number 9 or chapter number 10 and verse number 30 through 33. Let's see if they really understood what he was saying or what they were saying or what he was saying when he told them before Abraham was, I am. St. John chapter 10 verse number 30. All right, let's read. I and my father are one. We're not two separate people. We're how many? One. God is not a fraction. There is not God the Father, first person. God the Son, second person. God the Holy Ghost, third person. He's not a fraction. He's not one of three or one of a third God is one. Now the Trinitarians like to tell you when Jesus said I and my father are one. He was not saying that they were one and the same person. But that the word one comes from a word which deals with husband and wife becoming one. You know because when the husband and wife get married and they consummate the marriage they are one. I and my wife are one. Because the Bible says, they twain shall be one flesh. And like I asked that Trinitarian year, many years ago when I was talking to him, I said, so show me in the Bible when God was twain and then became one with somebody else. And he couldn't do it. Because that has nothing to do with marriage. He ain't talking about marriage. Can we say amen? <laughs> he ain't got nothing to do with marriage. I and my father are one. He ain't talking about two becoming one. And they understood what he meant. And we see their reaction. But let's read verse 32 or 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to what? Stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. What was the blasphemy they accused him of? Well, blasphemy, and because that thou being a man, makest I say what? So when he said, I and my father are one, they understood what he was saying. Now they had